Welcome back to Amino Acid Biosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous two videos, we first looked at the generation of a molecule called charismate, and this pathway, this generation of charismate, which is sometimes called the shikimate pathway, this is only done in bacteria and plants for the most part. Again, this charismate, as we saw in the next video, can be used to generate tyrosine and phenylalanine. Again, this process only occurs in plants and bacteria. It does not occur in, in mammals such as humans. Okay? Um, and these processes, both charismate synthesis and the conversion of charismate to tyrosine and phenylalanine, occur in an organelle called the plastid, at least in organisms that have a plastid, such as plants. And much like those pathways, the conversion of charismate to tryptophan, which is what we're going to look at in this video, is also a plastid process. And so this process of converting uh, charismate to tryptophan is going to be a five-step enzymatic process, and that's what we'll look at here. All right, so we've already got charismate in the plastid. We now have to use five enzymes to get tryptophan. And the reason it's five versus three as it was for tyrosine and phenylalanine is because for those, you're only generating one aromatic ring. Here we have two rings, so it's more complicated and we would expect to have to have more enzymes. The first enzyme in this pathway is called anthranilate synthase. So we start with charismate. We're gonna utilize a molecule of glutamine. In fact, we're actually gonna use the nitrogen from the R group, amide. Uh, it's gonna actually have a glutamine hydrolyzing domain. The amine is actually gonna go at this position on the corner, uh, ortho, to the carboxyl group at the top, okay? And in addition to that, you're actually gonna lose this OH at the bottom as uh, water, and then you're also going to lose this uh, group over here as pyruvate. So this pyruvate actually can then go and, and, and be transformed into other things. For example, if you're doing amino acid biosynthesis, the pyruvate would probably use, be used to synthesize alanine through alanine transaminase. But in any case, that's gonna give you anthranilite. Now, anthranilite is now going to be attached to a phosphoribose ring. Um, this is going to be catalyzed by an enzyme called anthranilate phosphoribosyl transferase. Now, being a phosphoribosyl transferase, we're going to expect this to utilize a PRPP uh, to donate the ribose 5-phosphate, which it will. We lose pyrophosphate, and we end up with this molecule called n 5 prime phosphoribosyl anthranilate. Now, notice one thing. They've actually rotated this ring of anthranilate, so they've rotated it. It's actually this nitrogen right here that's actually going to attach to uh, the one position on the ribose ring. Okay? Now the carboxyl group is pointed downwards. So that molecule is called n 5 prime phosphoribosyl anthranilate. Now, the third enzyme in this pathway is going to basically open up this ring. Okay, It's going to open up the ribose ring because, again, in the molecule of tryptophan, we do not have a ribose ring. So it would make sense that we have to open it up. But the carbons that are actually a part of this ribose ring are actually going to be used to build the five-membered ring of, of tryptophan, as you can see right here. This enzyme that accomplishes this ring opening reaction is called n 5 prime phosphoribosyl anthranilate isomerase. So it's just going to open up the ribose ring. Uh, notice the way that they've, they've again rotated this molecule. So now this benzene ring is over here. The nitrogen that was donated by this glutamine for an anthranilate synthase is in green right here. The carboxyl group, they pointed up just for the sake of space. And now you have all in red here. This is the entire ribose ring a ribose 5-phosphate ring, but it's been opened. And now this molecule is called enol one o carboxyphenylamino one deoxyribulose phosphate uh, Again, a tongue twister. It's a very complicated name, but that's what this molecule is called. And it's going to be consumed by this enzyme called indole-3-glycerol phosphate synthase. So let's think about what this enzyme is doing. First of all, you notice here, the way they've drawn this molecule, I have two carbons right here on the benzene ring, one, two, this nitrogen's three, here's carbon four, here's a position five. If I were to connect this carbon right here where my mouse is to the ring where the carboxyl group is, notice I would have a five-membered ring. Now, of course, I'd have to lose this molecule of water and I'd have to lose this carboxyl group as CO2, but if I connected this carbon of the benzene ring to this carbon in red, I'd have a five-membered ring. So that's exactly what's going to happen. So you're actually going to lose carbon dioxide. You're going to lose this hydroxyl group right here as water. You're going to have a ring, uh, creation of this ring from this carbon to this carbon right here. 
So that's this carbon and this carbon. And what you're left with is a molecule called indole-3-glycerol phosphate, okay? thus the name of the previous enzyme. All right, now indole-3-glycerol phosphate is going to be directly converted to tryptophan by the enzyme tryptophan synthase. Now tryptophan synthase is kind of a cool enzyme because of, of actually what it does. Rather than working on and transforming this whole group in red, and, and converting that into this group in blue, it's just gonna do something really nice and simple. It's nice when things are simple. It's just gonna cleave off this whole thing in red. All of it's gonna go away. That molecule, when it gets cleaved off, is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Remember, that's actually a molecule in glycolysis. So this will actually be able to be used for other processes. So that gets cleaved off, then tryptophan synthase brings in a completely fresh new molecule of serine and attaches the serine onto this carbon right here. So the serine's in blue. Again, you have to lose the hydroxyl group from the R group of serine. That's lost as water. It's a pyridoxal phosphate dependent mechanism, but you attach the serine part of it, and that's tryptophan. So again, for tryptophan synthase, you knock off the G3P, knock off all this in red as glycerol 3-phosphate, and then you just fresh attach the serine, and you're golden, and that's tryptophan biosynthesis. Now, again, this process, as you can see right here, this is occurring in plastid of, of plants or organisms that contain a plastid. This process, again, from charismate to tryptophan, does not occur in humans. Tryptophan is completely an essential amino acid, so this conversion does not occur in humans or mammals or birds or lizards or things like that. So tryptophan, again, is an essential amino acid, and therefore we must get it through the diet. Now, one thing I mentioned about tryptophan in one of the previous videos, and I'll just go back to it here, is once we actually obtain this tryptophan from the diet, it can actually be converted into serotonin and melatonin, and there's a bunch of other things in other organisms it can do. Um, but actually, tryptophan is, at least in a, from a protein structure uh, perspective, tryptophan's not common in proteins. Tryptophan actually, maybe percentage-wise, has a more uh, percent contribution outside of proteins than it actually does inside of proteins. That's rare for an amino acid. But it can be converted to serotonin in some cells of the brain, uh, such as the RAF nucleus, which is the major producer of serotonin. There are other producers as well. Uh, and it can also be converted to melatonin, which is a process that will occur in the pineal gland. Uh, melatonin is actually converted uh, or is synthesized from serotonin. So you have to first synthesize serotonin and then it gets converted to melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. And so when levels of melatonin build up, uh, you actually start to get tired and this usually occurs toward the end of the day. All right, so we've now seen the generation of charismate. We've seen the conversion of charismate to both tyrosine and phenylalanine, and now we've seen the conversion of charismate to tryptophan. And again, keep in mind of where this process is occurring. It's occurring not in humans, uh, mostly plants and bacteria, and usually in an organelle referred to as the plastid. Again, this tryptophan can also be transported out into the, into the cytosol, although it's not shown here, but that's where uh, the ribosomes will be and protein synthesis will occur. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something about the tryptophan biosynthesis pathway. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.